Hi, I'm Ashley from The Loopy Lamb. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. For today's tutorial, I want to show you how to make these adorable amigurumi birds, Bob Bird and Betty Bird. The materials needed for this project are Knit Picks Bravo Worsted in Rouge, Knit Picks Bravo Worsted in Denim, Knit Picks Bravo Worsted in Celestial, in Caution, and in fairy tale, We'll use some polyester stuffing, a tapestry needle, I'm using a bent tip tapestry needle from Clover, scissors, a stitch marker, a set of 12 millimeter safety eyes for each bird, so you'll need two sets if you're making both birds, and a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Let's get started. So today I'm going to show you how to make the base of the bird. This is the base without the accessories. Um, Betty is made using the fairy tale color and we add a flower and eyelashes for her. And this is Bob and he has a blue hat and he's made with the denim and celestial colors. So to start the body, we're going to make a magic circle using our 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to place six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we'll cinch the ring closed here. And for the second round, we're going to place a single crochet increase in each stitch around. That means you'll be placing two single crochet stitches into each stitch. Okay, first stitch is always tricky here. There we go. Okay, so there's our first stitch here. And at the beginning of each round, we're going to mark the first round with a stitch marker. And so we'll just move the same stitch marker up each round. Okay, so back in the first stitch to complete our single crochet increase. Okay, and into the next stitch, one single crochet, and there's our second. Okay, and third single crochet increase in the third stitch. I'm going to continue this around, and at the end of the round, we should have 12 single crochet stitches. Okay, so for our next round, we're going to have another increase round and we're going to do a pattern of single crochet increase and a single crochet in the following stitch. So I've started my first stitch here, moving up my stitch marker and here's the finished single crochet increase followed by a single crochet in the next stitch. Into the second stitch, we'll do single crochet increase followed by single crochet single crochet increase in the next stitch followed by single crochet and you'll repeat this pattern a total of six times until the end of the round and at the end of the round you should have 18 single crochet stitches okay so we're moving on to round four now and in the first stitch of the round we're going to place a single single crochet stitch. Okay, there's our first stitch and don't forget to move up that stitch marker. And then the next stitch we're going to do a single crochet increase followed by a single crochet stitch in each of the next two stitches. Okay, so then we're going to do single crochet increase followed by a single crochet in the next two stitches. And we're going to repeat that pattern of a single crochet increase followed by two single crochets in the next two stitches, a total of five times 
until there are two stitches remaining. Okay, and for our last two stitches here, we're going to place a single crochet increase in the first stitch and a single crochet stitch in the last stitch. And you should have 24 stitches for this round. So on to round five, we're doing another increase row and we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches. Let's move up our stitch marker. So we've got our first stitch two, three, followed by an increase in the next. So single crochet increase. Okay. And our pattern will be three single crochets. So we'll do one, two, three, followed by a single crochet increase in the next stitch. Okay. We're going to repeat this pattern around for a total of six repeats. There's two, three, increase, one, two, three, increase. And at the end of this round, we'll have 30 single crochet stitches. Okay, that's the end of our round and we're going to move on to round six. So for this round, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in the first stitch. Followed by a single crochet in the next stitch. Then we're going to begin our pattern of single crochet increase in the next stitch. That's our increase here followed by four single crochet stitches. One, two, three, and four. Okay, and we're gonna repeat that pattern five times. So we'll do single crochet increase, followed by a single crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. All right, and we'll start it again. Single crochet increase, followed by four single crochet stitches. One, two, three, and four. And we'll do it again. Single crochet increase, and four single crochets. One, two, three, four. And we're going to repeat this around until there are three stitches remaining. Okay, so we're at our last three stitches. And we're going to single crochet increase in the first stitch. And single crochet in each of the last two stitches. And so at the end of this round, you should have 36 single crochet stitches. Okay, so for our next round, round seven, we're going to do a single crochet stitch in the first stitch here. Again, don't forget to move up that stitch marker. It's so important. And then we're going to single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, and then we're going to place an increase in the next stitch. Okay, and now we're going to do five single crochets, placing a single crochet in each of the next five stitches. So that's three, four, five, and an increase in the next stitch. Okay, let's do that pattern again. Single crochet, two, three, four, and five, 
and a single crochet increase in the next stitch. Okay, we're going to repeat this pattern of five single crochets followed by a single crochet increase until the end of the round. When you finish this round, you should have 42 single crochet stitches. Okay, so this is the end of our round. Now we're going to be moving on to round eight. So we're going to place a single crochet in the first stitch. And single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And then we're going to place a single crochet increase in the fourth stitch. And so our pattern for this round will be six single crochet stitches, one single crochet in each of the next six stitches, followed by a single crochet increase. Okay, here's our increase stitch. Okay, and we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next six stitches again. One, two, three, four, five, six, followed by an increase in the next stitch. Okay, and we'll do that pattern again. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and single crochet increase in the next stitch. Okay, and we're going to repeat this pattern around until there are three stitches remaining. Okay, so when we get to the last three stitches, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each of the last three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Okay, so now we're going to move on to round nine. And for this round, we're just going to place a single crochet stitch in each of the stitches around. At the end of this row, you should, or round, sorry, you should have 48 stitches. So when we're completely done this round, we're going to do another eight more rows of single crochet in each stitch. So once again, for rounds nine, which is the round we're working on now, through rounds 17, you're going to just single crochet in each stitch around. And at the end of each of those rounds, you should have 48 single crochet stitches. And we'll just finish this round here, and then you can either pause your video to do those rounds, or, because um, I'm just going to fast forward through me crocheting these rounds, so we can get on to the next part. So. If you need to, pause the video and uh, come back to me when you're done round 17 and you're ready to start round 18. Okay, now that we're done round 9, like I said, pause the video. Um, I'm going to fast forward through these stitches so we can get ready for round 18. Okay, so I am just finishing up round 17 here, and we're about to start round 18. 
So for this round, um, we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches. Right, there's two, and there's three. Okay, so we're just going to finish up round 17 here. And start round 18. So before I start round 18, I like to place my safety eyes. Um, so you need to place the safety eyes in row, sorry, row 15 with seven stitches in between them. So I just count back three rows. And in the third row, I place my uh, eye, doesn't matter where, as long as I put my second eye seven stitches away. So you count seven stitches between the eyes and then place your eye in the eighth stitch. Okay, and there's my eyes, just making sure that they look good. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my backs to my safety eyes here. Okay, and put the first back on here. There we go. And the second back. There we go. All right. And there we go. So we're going to move on to round 18 here. So we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each of the first three stitches and we're going to do an invisible decrease. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So here's one stitch. Place our stitch marker. Two and three. So to do an invisible decrease, we're going to have to go under the front loops of the next two stitches to do our decrease. So here we go under the first stitch, the front loops only, and the second stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the stitch, yarn over and pull through the last loop, and there's your single crochet decrease. And so we're going to do single crochet in each of the next six stitches followed by a single crochet in uh, decrease, sorry, followed by another six single crochet stitches. That's three, four, five, and six, followed by a single crochet decrease. Okay, there's six and a, sorry, another six single crochet stitches. followed by a single crochet decrease. Now we're going to do this pattern of six single crochet stitches followed by a single crochet decrease until there are three stitches remaining in the round. There we go, another decrease. We'll do six crochets. There's two, three, four, five, and six, followed by our last decrease of the round. There you go. And in the last three stitches, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each stitch. Okay, so at the end of this round, you should have 42 stitches. Okay, so before I like to get too far, I like to weave in the end from when I made my magic circle. You can crochet over the tails when you're doing the magic circle, 
um, but I just like to be safe and make weave it in just to make sure that uh, this isn't going to come unraveled at all. Especially because I do give these, <clears throat> excuse me, these toys to my kids and uh, they could be a little rough on them. So I just want to make sure that uh, he, this end isn't going to open up at all. Okay, then we're just going to turn that back so the right side is facing out again. And we're going to do round 19. So for round 19, we're just going to place a single, single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So that's one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. And at the end of the round, we'll have 42 stitches. You can pause your video now and come back to me when you're done placing a single crochet stitch in each stitch around. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my round 19 here. And at the end of the round, I'll have 42 stitches. So we'll start round 20 now, and we'll place a single crochet stitch in each of the first five stitches. So that is one, two, three, four, and five, followed by a single crochet decrease. All right, and we're working in the front loops only of those stitches to keep it cleaner um, so it's less obvious. So single crochet in each of the next five stitches again, followed by a single crochet decrease. Okay, and we're gonna do this pattern around of five single crochet stitches, followed by a single crochet decrease. And here's our decrease. Right. Followed by five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and a decrease working through those front loops only. Okay, and five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five and single crochet decrease. Okay, again, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll decrease the last two stitches of the round. Okay, so you should have 36 stitches at the end of this round. And so for round 21, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in the first and second stitches of the round. Okay, here's our second single crochet. And then we're going to do a single crochet decrease. Okay, again, we're working in the front loops only, followed by a single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And we're going to decrease again followed by a single crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches. So there's two, three, and four, and decrease again, followed by four single crochets. So we're going to repeat the pattern of single crochet decrease, followed by four single crochets, uh, a total of five times until there are four stitches remaining in the round. Do our decrease. One, two, three, and four. Okay, and then we're going to do a decrease here and single crochet in the last two stitches. So I'm going to grab my stuffing here and start stuffing my bird. You want to make sure that you're stuffing as evenly as possible. Okay. So I finished stuffing as much as I'd like right now and I'm just counting my stitches. 
Okay, so for round 22, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in the first three stitches. There's two and three. And then we're going to do a single crochet decrease, always working in the front loops of the stitch only for your decrease. And then we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches. Two, three, followed by another decrease. And there we go. And we'll do this around. One, two, three single crochets, followed by a single crochet decrease here. Okay. And we're just going to repeat that pattern a total of six times. A single crochet in three stitches, followed by a single crochet decrease. And at the end of this round, we will finish with 24 stitches. I'm going to decrease these last two stitches here. All right. So I like to add a little bit more stuffing as I go. Um, I don't want the stitching to get in the way of my crocheting, but I do want my project to be stuffed firmly. A good rule of thumb um, with stuffing is at the end, when you're just about to close your project, give it a bit of a squeeze and it should feel kind of like you're squishing an orange, but without um, the stitches stretching at all. So if you find that you're, you're stretching your stitches and there are gaps, you've probably overstuffed. So we're going to start with round 23 here. We're going to place a single crochet stitch. Oops. Sorry about that. We're going to place a single crochet stitch in the first stitch here. And we're going to do a single crochet decrease. There we go followed by two single crochets. So one single crochet in each of the next two stitches, followed by a single crochet decrease. And then we'll do a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. So let's do another decrease here. And single crochet in the next two stitches. Single crochet decrease. And single crochet twice. One, two. Single crochet decrease. One and two. And then we're going to single crochet decrease. Oops. And single crochet in the last stitch of the round. So you should have 18 stitches. Okay, once again, we're just going to add a little bit more stuffing. I like to pull the tail a little long so it doesn't get, um, it's not pulling out any of my stitches while I'm stuffing. See, while I'm stuffing, I kind of try to rotate the project a bit and move the stuffing around to see if there are any um, obvious empty spots and fill those with the stuffing. All right, here we go, a little bit more. And I try to keep it away from the stitches as much as possible. Okay. So we're going to do round 24 here. And we're going to start with a single crochet decrease. Under 
the front loops only, of course. And then move up our stitch marker. Okay, and then we'll single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, and then we'll do another single crochet decrease. Followed by a single crochet. And then another decrease here. Followed by a single crochet. So we're going to do this decrease followed by a single crochet pattern a total of six times. And at the end of the round, you should have 12 stitches remaining. And it's really important to take your time when you're doing these decreases, when the hole's getting this small, um, just to be cautious about pulling your stitches uh, because that's when you kind of get a sloppy looking um, closure area there um, because you're pulling your stitches. So it's just important to take your time to get a nice clean finish. And of course, using that invisible decrease is also very important. All right, we're almost done here. Okay. So I think I'm going to add a little bit more stuffing here. Again, you just want to be careful about stretching the stitches at all, but you still want it to be stuffed firmly. All right, so I like to just kind of shape my project, make sure it doesn't look lumpy. And we're just going to start the last decrease round. So for this round, we're going to play, do six single crochet decrease stitches. So we'll decrease here in the first stitch. Okay, you make sure you move up your stitch marker. Do this next decrease. And again, we're going to do this six times to close our round up. Again, just taking this slow so that way I'm not stretching my stitches. Okay, so there's my last stitch, and I'm going to finish off and leave a long tail. Okay, so you're going to pull your yarn through that last stitch. And we're going to finish this off by threading our needle and doing what's called, I think it's called a magic finish. Or I've also heard it called an invisible finish. So I keep my first stitch marker in the round just so I can remember which one it is. And going through the front loops only, I'm going to weave the yarn through the front loops of each stitch of the last round I just did. And I like to count now that I've moved the stitch marker. So there's two, three, four, five. And this is our sixth stitch here. It's a little hard to see, so little. There we go. Oops. There, got it. All right. So we're just going to slowly cinch that close and see how it gives it a really nice flat finish there, kind of cinches it in. But for me, it's still sticking out a little too much. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle and put it right down the center and put it through the other side of my product. And that will just get rid of the little bump, give it a nice clean finish there. Right, they have pulled a little too hard, so I'll just pop that back out. And look how nice and clean that is. All right, so we're going to have to weave in our ends. And um, I do that by knotting the yarn. I like to do it two knots on top of each other. This will give a little bit of grab to that. And then I'm going to feed this back through the stitch I came out of and out through 
the other side of my project through a stitch. You don't want to go through the yarn because uh, that can be problematic. So see, I pulled that through, just kind of massaging my bird into place here. And then I'm going to do it again. Right, so I've knotted it and going back through the stitch out into a different part of the bird. Okay, make sure that I haven't left any indents there. Then I'm going to pull my tail to get it cut as close as possible and cut my tail. There we go. And that is our bird. Okay, so now we're going to make the wings. Again, we're still using the denim color because I'm making a bob bird first. And we're going to uh, make a magic circle or a magic ring here. And we're going to place uh, six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Okay, there's our six. Cinch our ring closed here. And then for round two of the wing, we're going to place a single crochet increase stitch in each stitch around. So once again, that's placing two single crochet stitches into each stitch of the round. Okay, so there's our first stitch here. And we're gonna go back into that stitch and create a second single crochet. Okay, and we'll do that in the second stitch. One, and two, there's our increase into the third stitch. One and two, there's our third increase. One and two. Now at the end of the round, you should have 12 stitches. Okay, so for the next three rounds, rounds three, four, and five, we're going to place a single crochet stitch into each stitch around. Okay, so at the end of each round, you should have 12 stitches. And we're going to do that for rounds three, four, and five. So you can pause the video here and uh, do those three rounds and come back to me. Okay, so I just finished my last round of round five, and we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch of that round. Okay, and we're going to finish off leaving a long tail so we can sew the wings onto the body. Okay, and we'll pull that yarn through the slip stitch here. And then this is what we'll do with the wings is they'll be sewn onto your bird flat. We don't actually stuff the wings. But I'm going to deal with this yarn tail from the magic circle and weave in my ends here. So I'll turn it inside out and just weave them in. Okay, there we go. So then we're just gonna snip the tail and turn it right side out. There we go, tuck that bit in there. And we'll just set that off to the side because we need to make another wing. So again, we we'll start this with a magic circle and we place six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Okay, let's inch that closed. And then for round two, again, we're going to place a single crochet increase into each stitch of the round. Always using our stitch marker to mark that first stitch of the round. Okay, and we're gonna do is an increase into each stitch of the round. And at the end of this round, we should have 12 single crochet stitches. As we did with the other wing, for the next ra three rounds, so rounds three, four, and five, we are going to be placing a single crochet stitch in each of the stitches around. At the end of each row, you should have 12 single crochet stitches. Okay, so I just finished round five of my second wing, and I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch. And once again, leaving a long tail so I can sew this onto the bird, pull that yarn tail through, and then I'm just going to weave in the ends from my magic circle here. Okay, cut my end here, turn the wing inside out, or right side out, I should say. Okay, 
And that's the wing. And we're just going to put it off to the side because we'll assemble our bird together and put these both off. Okay, so now we're going to start to make the tail. So using our main color, in this case we're doing denim because I'm making a bob bird, we're going to make a slip stitch and we're going to chain 10. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now, in the second chain from the hook, we're going to place a single crochet increase. So that means we're going to put two single crochet stitches in the second chain from the hook. And we're working in the back loops of your chains because we're going to end up working up the other side of this chain in a minute. So we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each of the next seven chains. So there's one, two, three, Four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to place four single crochet stitches in the last chain. There's one, two, three, and four. I'm working down the other side of the chain now. We're going to do seven single crochet stitches. So that's a single crochet stitch in each of the next seven chains. And there's one, two, three, Four, five, six, and seven. And then in the last chain here, we're going to do a single crochet increase. So you should have 22 single crochet stitches. Do not join this round. We're going to continue working in continuous rounds here. So for round two, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each of the stitches. So one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. Make sure that you move up that stitch marker. So mark the first stitch. And just a single crochet around here. And at the end of this round, you should have 22 single crochet stitches. Okay, almost done here. Okay, for round three, we're going to do a single crochet decrease over the first two stitches here. So again, working in the front loop only, we're going to do our single crochet decrease. Make sure you move up that stitch marker. Then we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each of the next eight stitches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to do a single crochet decrease. There we go. And then we're going to do a single crochet stitch in each of the next 10 stitches. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. So for round four, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in each stitch around. And at the end of this row, we should have 20 single crochet stitches. Okay, that's the end of round four. And so moving into round five, we're going to start by doing a single crochet decrease. I'm going to put my stitch marker here. Oh, didn't even notice my mouse had moved over here. Okay, and then we'll do a single crochet stitch in each of the next eight stitches. Then we're going to do a single crochet decrease, followed by eight single crochet stitches. At the end of this round, you should have 18 stitches. All right, so for round six, we're going to do a single crochet stitch in each stitch around. Again, at the end of this row, you should have 18 single crochet stitches. And this is the last round of our tail. Okay, so now that we're finished this round, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. And we're going to finish off leaving a long tail so we can sew the tail onto the body. We're not going to stuff the tail or the wings. They'll just be sewn on flat. So I'm going to quickly weave the end in here. Okay, so I just finished weaving my end here. The tail is done. I'm just going to place it off to the side. Now we're going to work on making the beak and we're going to be using the yellow color called caution. And we're going to make a magic circle. Okay, and for the first round, we're going to place eight single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Okay. So here's the first two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, we're going to cinch that closed. And then for round two, we're going to place a single crochet into the first stitch. Goodness, that first stitch is always so tricky. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Here's our first single crochet stitch. And then in the second stitch, we're going to do a single crochet increase. Just trying to work around my tail here. This is our first stitch of the increase. And our second stitch of the increase. And in the next stitch, we'll place one single crochet. And in the next, we'll do a single crochet increase. Okay. Then we'll do single crochet in the next stitch, stitch, sorry, <laughs> and a single crochet increase in the next stitch. Single crochet, single crochet increase. Okay, so at the end of that round, you should have 12 stitches. Okay, and so for the next two rounds, rounds three and four, we're just going to place a single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So that's one single crochet stitch in each stitch of the round. And at the end of rows three and four, you should have 12 stitches. So if you want to pause your video and come back to me, uh, you can do that now. 
Okay, so I'm just finishing up my last round of the beak. I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch of the round here and finish off leaving a long tail so I can sew the beak onto the bird and pulling that yarn through that last stitch. Again, just very quickly going to try and weave my ends in here. I do like to make sure that this, these don't come out. Okay, so I'm just going to cut my tail there. We're not stuffing the beak. We're just going to turn it right side out. And set it aside. So again, we're using that caution yellow color and we're making a magic circle. And just like we did with the beak, we are going to place eight single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Okay, so for round two, we are going to place a single crochet in our first stitch of the round. Put our stitch marker in place. And then we're going to single crochet increase in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet increase in the next. And that's our pattern going around. Single crochet followed by a single crochet increase in the next stitch. You should repeat that four times. And when you're finished the round, you should have 12 single crochets. Okay. So for our next round and rounds four and five, we're going to do single crochet in each stitch around. So that's three rounds, rounds three, round four and round five, we're just going to place one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So if you want to pause your video here, do those stitches and come back to me. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm just finished my last round here and I'm going to slip stitch. into the first stitch of the round and leave a long tail to sew onto the body. And pull that through the last stitch. Okay, I'm going to weave in my tail and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just finished weaving in my end there. I'm going to turn my foot inside, or right side out again, I should say. Um, and that's our first foot. So we're going to do that again um, because we need two feet for our bird. So we're going to start with the magic circle again and place eight single crochet stitches into the ring. Okay, for round two, we're going to place a single crochet stitch into the first stitch. Then we're going to single crochet increase in the next stitch single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet increase in the next, single crochet, single crochet increase, single crochet, single crochet increase. Okay, and at the end of this round, you should have 12 single crochet so stitches. For round three, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around, and we'll do the same for rounds four and five. So rounds three, four and five will just be single crochet in the round in each stitch around. You'll have 12 stitches at the end of each round. Okay, so we're just finishing up our last round here of the second foot. And we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round, leaving a long tail so we can sew that foot onto the body. And pull that yarn through the stitch. And I'm gonna just quickly weave in my ends here. Okay, we're all set. We're going to turn our piece right side out, and there's our foot. We've got two little feet now. We've got our wings, we've got our tail, our body, and our beak. It's time to get putting this guy together.
Okay, so this is our body. Again, if you were making a uh, Betty Bird, you would have used the color Fairy Tale. And we're going to start with sewing on our nose. So you'll need your tapestry needle. Just thread the end into the needle here. And place the beak here between the eyes and make sure it's even. Oops, sorry, I've gone off camera here a little bit. So I'm just threading my tail through the stitches. I'm working through both layers of the beak at the same time, and I'm working through the stitches of the last round. So I'm just going to sew this onto his face, working in the stitches in the body that are directly below where my nose will be. So I'm just going through both sets of stitches of the last round because I want the nose to be kept flat and I have not added any stuffing to the nose. And this is just a, a basic whip stitch here that I'm using, nothing fancy. But as long as you're placing your stitches into the stitches that are directly below where your nose is, is set to be, um, you shouldn't see these stitches at all. Okay, again, just working through both layers of the nose. The bent tapestry work, needle works great for this um, because it just helps you to find that um, stitch that you want to exit out of a little easier without having to bend and twist your arm and hand as much as you would with a normal tapestry needle. So now that I've gone through all of the stitches in the nose. I'm coming out another part of the no of the body close to the nose just so I can make sure that everything looks good. And I go back into that same stitch and out through another part of the body because I'm going to start weaving in my ends. Give that a tug, make sure it's secure, everything looks even. That looks good to me. Okay, and then we're going to do a double knot here and back through the stitch I came out of, out through another part of the body to pull that tail back inside. Make sure that you're coming out through a stitch and not through the yarn. And back into the stitch again after making a couple of knots. You can do this as many times as you'd like until you feel like everything is secure. I like to do this two or three times. And I'm going to snip that tail off. There we go. And there's our nose. All right. So we've got our nose on. Let's work on the wings. So we're going to thread our tapestry needle again. Make sure it's good and flat. And so I like to take the top of the last row and line it up with the bottom of the eyes. See, there's the top row here. Line it up with the eyes and make sure it's on the side of the bird. Okay. So I start my stitching off by going into the wing, making sure I'm lined up with a row of stitches so that way my wings don't go on crooked. And I use that as a guide. And again, when I'm stitching this on, I'm working through both layers of the wing, um, feeding the needle through the last row or round of stitches that I did. Again, just a simple whip stitch. Okay, so that sh it should be my last stitch here. No, I just want to make sure that is a little more flush. Looks like it's sticking off a bit. Okay, so I'm pulling this out through another side of the body just so I can get a good look at 
how that's been secured. Looks good. Now we're going to go, oh, I'm going to tie a knot here first. And pull that back through the body, going into the same stitch I just came out of. And we're going to do that again. Back through another part of the body, pulling that knot inside. And do one more time. And back through the body. Okay. So we're just going to trim that tail. And we're going to do this again on the other side with the other wing. So we'll thread our tapestry needle. And I'm just counting my stitches to make sure that where I'm placing this wing is on the same spot as the other side. So it looks e uh, equal and even. Okay, into the wing first. And into the body directly under where the wing is going to be on top of. Back through the wing through both layers of the fabric and back into the bird. And we're almost done. Back into the body. I'm going to push it out a different part. That looks good to me. Let's check. It looks even. Then we're going to do a double knot to secure it. Put it back through the stitches back into the body, one more time, and back into the body. Got a little tent, so I'm just going to pull that out and cut my tail. Okay, he's looking much better now. Oh, you know what, I want to do the tail first because it helps me line up the feet. So we'll thread our tapestry needle here. So we're going to line the tail up with um, the bottom of the bird here. I like to line it up along round four. Helps give him a little more stability when he's standing up and it looks super cute. So I'm counting my rows here. One, two, one, two, three, four. Line that up. And then just like we did with the wings and the beak, we're going to sew through both um, layers of the fabric and into the bird. Again, I'm using my stitches as a guide here. Working along that row for, uh, round four to secure the tail. Okay, and that's our last stitch there. Take a look. Looks good. And we're going to just start weaving in our ends. And that's our tail. So again, if you were making Betty Bird, <clears throat> this bird would be made with the fairy tail color, which is the purple. And the only differences between Bob and Betty here is that Bob is blue and he has a blue bowler style hat. And Betty is the purple bird that has the little pink flower. And she has a little embroidery done. She's got some eyelashes. So that's the, really the main difference. The main pattern for the body is the same. The wings, the beak, everything's the same. They're just made in different colors and they have a different accessory. So if you were making a second bird, you would just rewatch this video and use different colors. Okay, and we're going to attach the feet now. So to attach the feet, we're going to have to make a triangle type shape and we're going to line them up with round five and we're going to place three stitches between the feet. So I'm going to line this up with round five and whip stitch it to the body along round five. Again, working through both layers of the fabric on the foot. We're not stuffing the foot, we just want it to be kept flat. So the toes kind of point outwards away from the body when you're attaching them. And the way that they're sewn on kind of also helps provide some stability so he can stand up on his own. We're almost done here at the first foot. 
And we're just gonna come out through a different part of the body now that we're done sewing on the foot. Looks good to me. And then we're gonna weave in our ends. And we're gonna knot it up again. And now through another part of the body. One more time. And there we go. So we're just gonna trim that tail. And we're gonna sew on the other foot now. And we're going to make sure that the foot is flat. It's not stuffed. I'm going to thread our tapestry needle through the end of the foot and make sure that there are three stitches, one, two, three, between the feet. Again, we're sewing that on using a whip stitch along round five. Okay, so I just finished weaving in the ends from my foot here and he's all done. So this is the base of the bird once again. Um, if you're wanting to make this a bob bird then we're going to add the hat and if we're wanting Betty we're going to add a flower. So let's start with the hat for bob. We're using the dark blue color called celestial. And we're going to start with a magic circle. And we're going to place six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six cinch that closed. And for round two, we're going to place a single crochet increase into each stitch around. Okay, so goodness, only one, hot, one half the battle there. Okay, so there's our first single crochet stitch. I'm going to place our stitch marker and place a second single crochet in that first stitch. Okay, in the second stitch we'll do the same thing. Place two single crochets in the second stitch. And then we'll do that in each remaining stitch of this round. At the end of this round you should have 12 single crochet stitches. Okay, so for round three we are going to do a pattern of single crochet increase followed by a single crochet all the way around. So in our first stitch we'll do a single crochet increase. There's our second stitch and a single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, I'll show you again. Single crochet increase in the stitch and in the next stitch single crochet. Single crochet increase, single crochet. And we'll repeat that pattern of single crochet increase followed by a single crochet six times. And at the end of the row, we'll have 18 stitches. Okay, so for round four, we're going to place a single crochet stitch in the first stitch. Make sure we put our stitch marker in there. And then the second stitch we'll do a single crochet increase. There's one, two. And then we'll do a single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. So we'll do a single crochet increase in the next stitch. And then single crochet in the next two stitches. One, Two. We'll do a single crochet increase in the next stitch, followed by two single crochet stitches. We'll repeat that increase followed by two single crochet stitches. We'll repeat that pattern five times until there are two stitches remaining in the round. 
Okay, and then our last two stitches, we'll do a single crochet increase in the first stitch. And a single crochet in the last stitch. And you should have 24 stitches for that round. Okay, for the next round, we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches. So there's our first, second, and third, and then we'll increase in the fourth stitch. Okay, so then we'll do three single crochet stitches. One, two, and three, followed by a single crochet increase. Right, and we'll do that again. Three single crochet stitches, followed by a crochet increase. We'll repeat that pattern around until the end of the round. So three single crochet stitches, followed by a single crochet increase. At the end of this round, we'll have 30 stitches. Okay, so for the next round, round six, we are going to do a single crochet in each stitch around. So for rounds six, seven and eight, we will just place a single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So that's three rounds, six, seven, and eight, we'll each have a single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So if you wanna pause the video and come back to me when you're done those three rounds of single crochet, um, we'll do that now. Okay, so I just finished my three rounds of single crochet. I'm just double checking. I've got everything I need. And we're going to move on to row nine. So for round nine, we're going to single crochet increase in the first stitch. Followed by a single crochet in the next stitch. We're going to repeat that pattern around. We'll do single crochet increase in the next stitch, followed by a single crochet stitch in the following stitch. Okay, and we'll do another increase here, followed by a single crochet. At the end of this round, we should have 15, oh, sorry, 15, goodness, 45 stitches in the round. So single crochet increase, followed by single crochet, single crochet increase, followed by single crochet. So these increases will be creating the brim of Bob's hat. We want it to be wider than the rest of the hat, so that's why we're doing so many increases in this round. Again, at the end of this row, you should have 45 stitches. Okay, so round nine is done. Then we're going to start round 10. And so for round 10, we're simply going to slip stitch into each stitch around. You don't want to do these stitches too tight when you're going around um, because it will might make it a little difficult to sew the hat on or warp the brim. So don't do them too, too tight, but we're just going to place a single slip stitch into each stitch of the round. And again, at the end, you should have 45 stitches. And we're getting close to the end of our round here. Okay. So we're just going to finish this up, place our last slip stitch, 
end of the round. And there's our hat. So we're going to finish off leaving a long tail to sew the hat on. We're going to pull that yarn through the last stitch and then we're going to quickly weave in the end from the magic circle. I'm not going to trim the tail because I can use it as stuffing. So I'm just going to tuck that in there and thread our long tail with our tapestry needle and then we're going to sew the hat onto the bird. So I like to feed the tail down through to the bottom so I go back through the last stitch there and pull the tail through. And so now I've got my hat, we're going to put it on Bob's head and start to sew it on. Try to get it as centered as you can. If you want, you can put it on a bit of a jaunty angle. Okay, so when I'm sewing this hat on to Bob, I like to work into the bottom stitches under the brim. And then use the stitches on the bird's body that are directly underneath where the brim will be. Helps to hide the seam and make it um, just a little cleaner. And so I'm going to do that all the way around my hat. And I'll come back to you right before I'm about to finish sewing it up so you can see what the next steps are. So if you're going to sew a uh, seam along with me, leave a small opening because we're going to add some stuffing to the hat in a minute. Okay, so I've got a little opening here left on my hat. I'm going to use some polyester stuffing to put inside the hat to help it keep its shape. Again, you want to try and get that stuffed evenly, but without stretching your stitches. So just move it around in there. Don't want his hat to look lumpy. No, that looks good. I'm going to keep sewing. Okay, so we're just going to finish this last stitch here. Alright, and then we're going to make sure the hat looks shaped well. Move that stuffing around so it doesn't look lumpy. And there it is. That stuffing doesn't show in any places. Okay, so I'm just going to weave my ends in in the same manner I've done for all the other parts. Okay, and there you've got your finished bob. He's all set now. We're going to move on to making a flower for Betty. So using the yellow or caution color, we're going to make a magic circle. And then we're going to place six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Okay, and then we're going to cinch that closed. And we're going to join our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch. We're going to cut our tails, pull that yarn through the last stitch, we're going to use our tapestry needle 
to thread the tail that we just cut and feed it through the first stitch of the round and pull it through to the end back. Gosh, I'm sorry, the camera seems getting a little blurry here. Sorry. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, now we've got the rouge or um, pink color for our flower. And we're going to create a slip knot. And going into the first stitch of our previous round, we're going to pull the rouge color through. And attach it with a slip knot. And pull that tight. Now we're going to chain one and place a half double crochet stitch into the first stitch of the last round, which is the stitch we attached our yarn to. So there's our half double crochet. Then in the same stitch, we'll place a double crochet stitch. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's our double crochet. And then we'll place a half double crochet in that same stitch as well. And that's our first petal. So we'll slip stitch into the second stitch of the yellow round there. There we go, right there. We're going to place a slip stitch in that stitch. And then we're also going to half double crochet, double crochet, and half double crochet all in that same stitch. And that creates your second petal. Okay, so for our third petal, we will slip stitch into the next stitch. half double crochet in the same stitch, double crochet in that same stitch, and half double crochet again in that same stitch. And now we're slip stitching into the next stitch, half double crochet, double crochet, and finally, a last half double crochet in all in the same stitch. And we'll slip stitch into the next stitch again. And again, we'll do the half double crochet, double crochet, and half double crochet all in the same stitch again. And we'll slip stitch into the last stitch and repeat that same sequence half double crochet, double crochet, and half double crochet in that last stitch there. So what we'll do is we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of this round. And that's your flower. If you have a little bit of yellow peeking out there where you slip stitched from the first round, just pull that tail and it should uh, hide that for you. So we're gonna finish off leaving a long tail so we can sew that onto our Betty Bird. And then we'll pull the yarn through that last stitch, pull it tight. And that's your flower. So if you're going to sew this onto Betty, take their tail that you just cut, thread it onto your tapestry needle, and feed it through the flower to the back through the stitch you created your slip stitch in. And pull that taut. Nope. Oh, there we go.
just going to show you again because I noticed the camera went a little blurry there. There we go. And you're all set. So I like to just um, pull the yarn towards the middle because I don't sew the tips of the flower petals on. I sew it in from the center. And then I will um, weave all the ends from the flower into the bird. Okay, so I've got my flower and another bird that I've whipped up, and that's going to be our Betty. And if I were making Betty, I would just sew this flower onto the head there, just slightly above the right eye or wherever you prefer. And we're going to use our black embroidery thread in our tapestry needle here to give Betty some eyelashes. Okay, so I like to double my embroidery thread up because it um, cuts down on how often I have to do the stitching or pass the needle through the project. So I'm going to thread my needle on, double the yarn up, or it's not yarn, embroidery thread, sorry. Create a knot. Now this often turns out messy for me, but I really don't even mind because it's going to be hidden in the project and the bigger the anchor, the less likely the stitches are going to fall out. So let's feed our needle through the back of our project and we're going to come out through this stitch right here next to the eye. So make sure you're going in through a stitch, not through the yarn or else you're not going to be able to hide that yarn tail or embroidery thread tail and knot. This can be a little tricky if you've got the back on, but it's definitely not impossible. Again, just take your time. Um, see, like if I pull that too hard, it could snap. So I'm just going to take my time feeding that in. And then I'll snip off anything that shows through. Okay, just squeeze it up and it's gone. Okay, so to create our first eyelash, I'm going to go over two stitches. So we're going to go two stitches over from the stitch I came out of. So you can see one, two, oh, that's too far. One and two. There we go. And then we're going to put our needle in through that stitch. So here we go. We're going to go back through the same stitch we came out of to create our first eyelash. Don't pull too tight because it'll um, warp your project there. And then we're going to go into one stitch above and slightly to the left of the last eyelash and back into the first stitch that we, we came out of. And there's our eyelashes. So I'm going to feed this back into the bird and come out the same stitch on the other eye. So the center stitch on the left eye. Pull that through. And that's, that looks pretty. And then we're going to repeat the same instructions but on the opposite eye. So we're going to go two stitches over and come back out our first stitch. And then to create our second eyelash, we're just going to go in the stitch above, slightly over from the last eyelash, and pull that up through. Here we go. Now we've got eyelashes. And so I'm just going to weave my tail in by going back into the same stitch. And there you go, you've got Betty's eyelashes. And I weave my embroidery tails in the same way that I do for my yarn tails. Just tie some knots and weave it into the project.
Okay, I'm back in. And you're set. Thanks for watching my tutorial on how to make your very own Bob and Betty bird. I really hope that you love them. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. The ad-free PDF version of this pattern is available in both my Etsy and Ravelry shops, but the pattern is available for free on my blog, theloopylamb.com. I'll include all the links to those in the description below. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching, happy hooking, and I'll see you next time.